Welcome to the second selection from the films made by John Laird between 1962 and 1964, years which witnessed the last great flourishing of steam traction on the railways of Ireland. By this time, steam was already virtually in memory on the railways operated by CIE in the Republic of Ireland. But many steam locomotives were still to be found hard at work on the railway network in Northern Ireland, which was run by the Ulster Transport Authority. We will enjoy the sights of locomotives like the WT Class 264 tanks from the former LMS NCC lines. And those of the Great Northern Railway, some still in the fading remnants of their once glorious blue livery, as displayed here on the now preserved S Class 440, number 171, Sleeve Gullion. In the course of the programme we will explore some of the more interesting aspects of steam workings which could still be observed in these years. We will look at the steam powered freight train, soon to become a thing of the past, and see some rare 5 foot 3 inch gauge industrial locomotives at work. We will track down some of the remaining steam duties on the main lines, and observe the surprising number of steam suburban turns which are still to be found on the former Great Northern lines out of Belfast. And we will revisit those two wonderful lines whose closure in 1965 tore the heart out of Ulster's railway network. The former Great Northern routes from Gora Wood to Newry and Warren Point and the line from Portadown to Derry, known to railwaymen and enthusiasts alike as the Derry Road. As an introduction to our programme, just sit back and enjoy this nostalgic collage recalling the magnificent steam locomotives which once thundered through the lush green landscapes of Ulster, so diligently recorded for us by the camera of John Laird. We begin our exploration of aspects of the steam railway with a look at goods traffic. On Wednesday the 3rd of March 1964, LMS NCC W Class Mogul, number 97 Earl of Elster, sedately brings the 130 goods from Portadown to Belfast, past Adelaide. In May of the same year, an evening goods, the 717 from Belfast to Portadown, Heads out of the city at the same location behind Great Northern Railway SG2 Class 060, now bearing the UTA number 40.
Mughal number 97 is seen in action again, this time near Dam Head, with the 2.45 p.m. goods from Portadown to Belfast on the 28th of August, 1964. The loose coupled steam hauled goods trains of the type seen in these sequences would have been completely familiar to the railwaymen of the turn of the century, and indeed probably to those who worked for the old Ulster Railway 100 years before. These trains were so different to those which are to be seen today. Each wagon probably carried a different cargo, and most were unbraked. It was the skills of the engine driver and the guard in his brake van at the rear of the train which kept the train from running away, out of control, or from breaking apart as wagon couplings, not kept taut, snatched at each other. The traditional goods engine in Ireland was the Knot 6 Knot, as exemplified by SG Class No. 44, built by Bayer Peacock in 1913 for the Great Northern, seen here passing Musgrave Park on the outskirts of Belfast on the 29th of February 1964 with the Porter Down to Belfast train. On a crisp March morning in 1964, UG Class 06 Knot No. 47 speeds through Lisburn on our way to Belfast. The former LMS NCC WT Class 264 tank locomotives were a common sight on goods trains on the GNR main line. Number 8, the engine seen here, was built by the LMS for their Ulster lines at Derby in 1946 one of the first four members of this most successful class to be put into service. GNR S class number 63, Sleeve Nimon, was recorded shunting a morning goods at Lisburn on the 2nd of March 1964. Five days later at the same location, SG3 class 06 knot number 35, an example of the most powerful type of 06 knot ever to run in Ireland, sails through with the 2.45 p.m. goods from Portadown to Belfast. Goods traffic from Newry and Warren Point was tripped to Portadown and then taken on to Belfast in a different train. Here U class 440 number 66 Meath brings the 715 goods from Newry to Portadown up the bank towards the branches junction with the main line at Gordawood on Saturday the 20th of June 1964. Long coal trains common on the railways of Britain were rare in Ireland. However, one such working persisted into the mid-1960s. WT No. 10 brings a train of empty coal wagons from the Courtauld's factory at Carrick Fergus along the shore of Belfast Law. This working ran as required and was recorded here on the 14th of August 1964. Two WT hauled ballast trains were recorded by John Laird at Greencastle on the shores of Belfast Law on the 8th of March 1964 at a spot known as Erskine's Gut. Freight trains and their locos observed the Sabbath. SG2 number 40 enjoys her day of rest in the Goods Yards at Oma Station on Sunday the 5th of July 1964. Wood is piled in her footplate ready to light her up again on the Monday morning. 
Looking at the number of wagons in the yard, it is hard to believe that the line through Oma was soon to be closed and that the UTA would abandon all rail freight traffic within Northern Ireland at the same time in February 1965. You don't often see boats and goods wagons. An essential part of the work involved in moving goods by rail was that which went on in the goods yards, which we will now explore. On the 11th of April 1964, W-class mogul number 104, the last of the class built in 1942, and one of only three which were never given a name, brings a freight from Porter Down towards the entrance of the GNR's main goods yards in Belfast at Grosvenor Road. UG number 45 waits to follow the goods into the yard to begin the task of shunting the wagons which the mogul has brought in. A rake of beautifully turned out red wagons in the yard were supposedly for use on the Coatholds coal train which we saw earlier. In practice they were used all over the system on all sorts of duties. On Thursday the 13th of August 1964, U-Class 440 number 67 Louth was the shunting engine at the Grosvenor Road goods yard. Built by Payer Peacock in 1948 to a design which went back to 1915, the former Great Northern locomotive carries the UTA's lined black livery. A UG 060 and an S Class 440 are also seen working in the yard. Two six four tank number 55 brings the goods train into the yard. UG number 45 is on hand to shunt the wagons. The clanking of wagon buffers, the shouts of the shunters and the hissing and puffing of the shunting engine are sounds which those who remember the days of the steam-powered, loose-coupled freights will instantly recall. Wagons uncoupled by the shunter are loose shunted down the yard. The tank engine heads off to the shed, while the 060 disposes of the wagons which the WT has brought in. A familiar sight for many years at the former NCC York Road station in Belfast was one of the pair of ex Sligo Leitrim and Northern Counties Nord 64 tank engines, bought by the UTA when the SLNCR closed in 1957 for shunting around the yard. Here, number 26, Loch Melvin, is the engine on duty. The other Sligo tank, the now preserved number 27, Loch Erne, heads for the shed, followed by a WT with a railway man hitching a precarious lift on the front of the engine. Some goods and parcels traffic had always been conveyed on passenger trains. S-Class number 170 Erigal shunts three vacuum braked GNR vans designed for this purpose at Great Victoria Street Station in Belfast. On the NCC system, passenger trains like these running from Larne Harbour to Belfast conveyed goods and parcels traffic in the brown vacuum brake vans which were often to be seen marshalled at the rear of the passenger coaches. Steam locomotives were also used extensively on permanent way trains. Then, as now, engineering work often took place on Sundays when traffic was lighter. These duties were sometimes used to run in locomotives which had just emerged from the works. WT tank number three, obviously not long out of the pin shop, was seen here at Greencastle on Sunday the 8th of March 1964. Sister engine number nine hauls a short works train at Monkstown.
the tank which was later to be preserved by the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland, number four, brings a ballast train up the bank towards Monkstown on the same day, Sunday the 23rd of March 1964. The green fields beside the railway have long since been built over. Back on the Great Northern, mogul number 104 holds a couple of wagons containing ballast past Central Junction in Belfast. The white plate on the last wagon was sometimes used instead of a tail lamp in daytime on the GNR system. At the back of the extensive complex of sightings, which were to be found at the GNR's Adelaide shed, a jeep, a name often given to the WT tanks by both enthusiasts and railwaymen, is employed in removing an accumulation of locomotive ash from the site. We go back to 1962 to see some of John Laird's earliest films which were made in black and white. This sequence deals with workings on the once extensive dock lines around Belfast. One of the Sligo tanks crosses the Lagan Viaduct on the Belfast Central Railway which linked the County Down system to the Great Northern. Her train consists of wagons of local coal for Adelaide. The approach of her train seems to have almost taken the signalman at East Bridge Street Junction by surprise as he rushes down to meet it. On the 12th of September 1962, John Laird recorded one of the oldest Great Northern engines still active at the time on the dock lines which provided a tenuous link between the NCC and Great Northern systems in Belfast. PG Class Snot 6 Knot No. 10 was built at the GNR Works at Dock in 1904. This venerable old goods engine shunts among brand new motor cars which have just been unloaded from a ship, though it is doubtful if any of the Minis or A40s would give the 60 years of hard work which the GNR and the UTA got out of number 10. Preceded by a man with a red flag, number 10 shunts some coal wagons along the dockside tramways. Lorries have to wait as the old lady sedately pushes her coal wagons across Duncrew Street. Having deposited her wagons of locomotive coal for the steam engines operating out of York Road Shed in the yard at Duncrew Street, number 10 heads back the way she came. Some vans are next to number 10's agenda. She is attended by a shunter with this distinctive long pole for uncoupling wagons. By now the day has become very wet and miserable. Number 10, preceded by her flagman, heads back off towards the connection to the Great Northern System at East Bridge Street Junction, close to where Belfast Central Station is located today. Before leaving Belfast dock lines, we'll have a brief glance at the lines at Queen's Quay on the County Down side of the River Ligon. Here on the Queen's Island, famous throughout the world as the home of the shipbuilders Harland and Wolfe, Sligo Tank No. 26, Loch Melvin, works a train of locomotive coal bound for the GNR shed at Adelaide. Recorded by John Laird on the 24th of August 1963, the train, again accompanied by a flagman, holds up traffic on the busy Queen's Road in the process. Industrial railway systems were few and far between in Ireland. One such which was still in operation in Northern Ireland in the 1960s was this one which served the large Coatholds factory at Garrick Fergus on the NCC route from Belfast York Road to Larne Harbour. 
The factory needed a substantial amount of coal, which was imported through Belfast docks. We saw the return working of an empty coal train from Courtholes earlier in the programme. At Carrickfergus, the factory settings were worked by a pair of 0 0-4-0 saddle tanks named Wilfred and Patricia. The tanks had been built new for Courtholes by Peckets of Bristol. Patricia, works number 2088, arrived in 1948 and was joined by Wilfred, works number 2113, in 1950. Normally only one engine was required to be in steam at a time. Here Patricia heads up the siding which connected the factory with the Larne line. The saddle tanks were permitted onto the main line to collect coal wagons and occasionally went through to Belfast York Road for repairs. Here Patricia romps along the Larne line on the occasion of a visit of a group of railway enthusiasts to the site. These two rare 5 foot 3 inch gauge packets are seen together and passing a Messerschmitt bubble car, another relic of transport in the 60s, Patricia moves some wagons around the sidings before returning to her shed. You move away from the railway's goods traffic to look at a more glamorous aspect of steam working, mainline passenger trains. W class 260, number 99, King George VI, and S class number 170, Erigo, are recorded near Central Junction on the way from Adelaide Shed to Great Victoria Street Station to take up mainline passenger duties. The truth is that by the early 1960s most mainline passenger services had been dieselised, but we will concentrate on the ones that remain steam hauled and the locomotives that were used in them. Here a jeep brings the 2.15pm train for Dublin out of Great Victoria Street Station. The CIE stock is in that company's black and orange livery, a variation of which is still in use today. During the week UTA steam locomotives and trains bound for Dublin were normally replaced by a CIE diesel at Dundalk, but on Sundays one of the magnificent Great Northern VS Class 440s was often called upon to work the full length of the main line. The NCC moguls are regular performers in the Great Northern Main Line in the early 1960s after the diesels had taken over nearly all the scheduled services on the former NCC system. Here number 99 King George VI powers a Belfast supported down train through Adelaide on the 13th of September 1964. A jeep heads a train of CIE stock bound for Dublin at the same location. Another one of these ubiquitous tank engines leans on the curve through Finnehy with a down train from Dublin. At the same location but going in the other direction, number 54 heads at 3.15pm to Dublin on the 27th of June 1964. Another WT with a Dublin bound train speeds through the maze between Lisburn and Lurgan. One of the tanks is recorded hauling a train of CIE stock on Moira Bank. The construction of the M1, Northern Ireland's first motorway, is underway in the foreground. A jeep enters Portadown from the south.
At Portadown Station, one of the S-Class locomotives bought by the UTA from CIE and still retaining the GNR blue livery, heads for Belfast. Our next sequences are at Gora Wood. A WT climbs away from the station with a Belfast to Dublin train. U-Class 440 number 66 Meath brings the empty stock of a special working towards the station on the 13th of July 1963. A VS storms through the station on a return non-stop excursion from Dublin to Belfast. VS number 207 Boyne, working through from Dublin with a regular service train on a Sunday evening, passes the South Boyne CIE set headed by a 121 class General Motors diesel, which is about to depart from the up platform. Jeep number 53 heads south out of Gora Wood, where its train has been examined by customs officials, with the 315 Belfast to Dublin service on the 20th of June 1964. A jeep tackles a stiff climb beyond Gora Wood to the summit of the line, passing over that landmark on the way to the summit, the Egyptian Arch, which is situated near the location of the present-day Newry Station. UTA steam locomotives usually come off at Dundalk to be replaced by a CIE diesel for the rest of the run south. S-Class 440 number 170 Erigal goes off to the shed to turn before working back north on the 30th of June 1964. On this occasion, mogul number 99, King George VI, has made it as far as Dublin, seen here entering Dundalk from the south with a return excursion to Belfast. Our last sequence at Dundalk is of a jeep taking over a Belfast-bound train, which had been brought up from Dublin by a CIE diesel. Regular steam workings on the NCC lines were not as common as on the former Great Northern routes, though the Port Rish branch was often a happy hunting ground for steam enthusiasts. Here at WT working bunker first heads out of Coleraine with the train for Port Rish. Another tank steams towards the coast. Turning excursion to Belfast, speeds towards Coleraine. Back on the main line, the train for Belfast leaves Coleraine.
We head further along the line to Ballymena. On Sunday the 2nd of August 1964, the 7.30 Portrush to Belfast train made up of 10 bogey coaches and hauled by the non-preserved WT tank number 4 received the assistance of sister engine number 10 as a pilot for the remainder of the run towards Belfast. With number 10 running bunker first, the pair leave Ballymena. and are later seen working down the bank towards Belfast. The NCC main line to Londonderry began with a stiff climb from White Abbey up through Monkstown. Heavy trains required double heading on this stretch, having assisted a special a jeep drifts down the bank. A pair of tanks make an impressive sight on the climb up through Monkstown on a Sunday school excursion bound for Port Rich. Special trains kept many steam locomotives in employment. A jeep brings a Sunday school excursion bound for Bangor, off the branch from Antrim and onto the GNR main line at Knockmore Junction near Lisburn. UG number 49 speeds past Knockmore Junction 10 to 1st with another excursion destined for Bangor. The 12th of July parades generated a wealth of specials. Mogul number 93, the foil, has an orange men's special far too long for the platform at Six Mile Cross on the Derry Road. Another busy day in the railway year was August the 12th. The Apprentice Boys demonstration in London Derry on that day brought a large number of specials, invariably steam hauled, to that city. In our first collection of John Laird's films, The Swan Song of Steam in Ulster, we showed the special trains which used the GNR line to Derry on the 12th of August 1964. This was the scene that day at the city's other station, the waterside terminus of the NCC line from York Road in Belfast. Special trains were all hauled by jeeps. On the NCC lines it was the custom to chalk on the engine, the time of the return train it was diagrammed to work. The engines had to be serviced in the primitive conditions provided in the roofless shed beside the passenger station. This is not the longest steam hauled push pull train in recorded history, but tank number 57 near points pass on the GNR main line, propelling the empty stock of a special train that had worked to Scarva. And judging from the speed of the train working wrong line, the crew are breaking just about every rule in the book in the process. We now turn from special trains to some unusual workings. In the days before the UTA took over the GNR lines which were located in Northern Ireland, this would have been a very rare sight indeed. SG2 class 06 not number 40, travelling along the NCC main line out of York Road. The locomotive had been to York Road Works for repairs and was working back to the Great Northern via the branch from Antrim to Knockmore Junction. On September the 11th, 1963, Great Northern S class 440, number 170 Errigal, heads for York Road. This locomotive was one of several GNR machines which had recently been bought by the UTA from CIE to cover a shortage of steam power. Later in the day 170 was seen at York Road. It was quite a performance getting a locomotive into the works at York Road. SG3 number 32 is first manoeuvred into position by the turntable. She is then hauled into the works by a winch and a capstan. One aspect of railway activity in Northern Ireland in which steam traction had perhaps a surprisingly long innings was on suburban services out of Great Victoria Street Station in Belfast along the Lagan Valley to Lisburn and beyond. The Great Northern Railway had always provided a good local service on the northern part of its main line.
Whilst most of these trains in the 1960s were operated by diesel rail cars, a number of quite regular steam workings, particularly in the evening peak, were still to be seen. One of these, the 543 All Stations to Lisburn, leaves Great Victoria Street on the 1st of September 1964, hauled by S-Class number 63, Slave Namon. Another member of the class, this time one of the ex-CIE trio which retained the Great Northern Blue livery, heads a down local near Adelaide. U-Class 440 number 67 Louth, with a lightweight two-coach local, the 2pm from Lisburn passes the same location on the 2nd of March 1964. Number 174, Karen Toole, moves off from the stop at Finnehy Station at the 5.43 to Lisburn on the 26th of May 1964. Up until the end of passenger traffic on the GNR branch from Lisburn to Antrim in September 1960, this working had continued through to Antrim, the engine returning later in the evening with the goods. On September the 16th, 1964, the same train at the same location this time with UG number 48 in charge. In UTA line black, S class number 60, Sleeve Donard, leaves Finnehy on another local to Lisburn on the same date. Such was the traffic before the First World War, the Great Northern contemplated building a third track along this part of the line, but their plans never came to fruition. On Saturday the 3rd of March 1964, number 170 Errigal leaves Dunmurray with the 1.01pm local to Lisburn. Many people worked the half day on Saturdays in the 1960s and the normal weekday evening services were replicated around midday on Saturday to cater for these people. Number 63 Sleeve Namon leaves Dunmurray with the 110 from Lisburn and the other direction on the same day. Inevitably, the jeeps were also used on these local services to Lisburn. An unidentified member of the class arrives at Lambeg. In this 1963 scene, two of the train's four coaches are still in the GNR Teak livery. The NCC moguls were seen on local trains less frequently. Here number 104 brings a stopping train into Lambeg. The same locomotive heading a local which omitted some stops speeds through Finnehy on a thoroughly miserable day. A number of these trains terminated at Lisburn. U-Class 440 number 67 Live runs round her train at the station on Monday the 2nd of March 1964. Other local trains continued then, as they still do today, beyond Lisbon to Portadown. S-Class number 60 Sleeve Donard has another of the Saturday midday trains, the 105 departure from Lisburn to Portadown. A jeep arrives at Lisburn on a stopping service from Portadown. In the other direction, an S holds a ported down train. Almost obscured by its own exhaust, a U-Class 440 leaves Lisburn on an all stations train to Belfast.
UG 06 knot number 48 heads for Portadown with the 1.05pm train. This was a Saturday's only service. On Saturday the 7th of March 1964, UG number 47 departs from Platform 3 at Lisburn with the 1.25pm stopping train for Great Victoria Street. On the same day, S-Class number 170 Errigal works another one of the Saturdays only services, the 1.45pm Belfast to Portadown. We return to Great Victoria Street, a name removed from the Irish Railway map in the 1970s but soon to be restored, when Northern Ireland Railway's new station opens here in 1995. To remember a line which closed 30 years ago, but which is still mourned to this day, the Great Northern's route to Dungannon, Oma, Straban and Derry, the Derry Road. A Derry-bound train headed by an S-Class speeds out of the city through Adelaide. NCC moguls were also regular performers in dairy trains up to closure. Portadown was where the dairy road left the Great Northern Main Line to Dublin. U-Class 440 number 67 Louth brings the 5.35pm Belfast to Dungannon into the station on Monday the 30th of March 1964. A big D SG-Class number 37 is on station pilot duty. As a jeep heads for Dundalk, a dairy road train waits on the adjacent platform. Mughal works tender first between Portadown and Dungannon. A Mughal is in the bay platform at Dungannon as an S arrives with a Belfast bound train. Single line staffs are exchanged on the platform. Mughal number 91, the Bush, leaves Dungannon tender first with a train for Portadown. Towards the end, the jeeps were allowed beyond Portadown. Here number 53 runs round a local. It is brought from Portadown at Dungannon Station. We still dream of the Derry Road. Can it really be 30 years since the futile attempt made in the courts by Tyrone County Council to keep the line open failed, and the last trains ran on the 15th of February 1965? These scenes were recorded between Dungannon and Pomeroy in July 1964. Mogul number 91, the Bush on a goods, has been put into the siding at Pomeroy to allow our passenger train to pass. Staffs are exchanged, giving our driver the authority to enter the next single track section. Whilst the Derry Road is now only a distant affectionate memory, which we can relive to some extent through the work of John Laird, the engine on this occasion is still very much with us. Great Northern S-Class number 171 Sleeve Gullion, named like her sisters after Irish mountain peaks, was saved by the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland and has ranged far and wide on rail tours around the country, giving pleasure to thousands. If you would like to join the RPSI and help the Society keep steam alive on Ireland's railways, full details are given at the end of this programme.
our train approaches Oma, where more water is taken on board, but the worst of the climbing is now over, and the rest of the journey to Straban and Derry will not give the crew much of a problem. Number 171 was one of the three S-Class locomotives bought by the UTA from CIE, and thus escaped being painted in the UTA black livery. In service then, as in preservation now, she carries the Great Northern's blue livery lined out in black and white, one of the most attractive liveries ever to adorn a steam locomotive. Between Oma and Straban, the line followed the valley of the river Struel and Morn, crossing and recrossing the river along the way. An S-Class was recorded here on the picturesque stretch between Newton Stewart and Victoria Bridge. A big D drifts lazily towards Straban with a brake van in tow, having deposited some wagons at Sion Mills. Reminders of the County Donegal Norgage, which we covered in Volumes 1 and 3 of this series, still linger at Straban. Some local trains ran between Straban and Derry. Local number 104 heads the Saturdays only 6.15pm Derry to Straban. John Laird's vantage point from which he filmed this train was the embankment which once carried the branch of the County Donegal Norgage line that ran from Straban to Derry. The return working of this train was the 7pm from Straban. Consisting of only one bogey, it is seen between Straban and Port Hall. A mogul leaves Straban for Oma. The site of this station, for many decades a major railway junction, has been completely levelled to make way for a new road bypassing the town. At the other end of the station, an S-Class 440 arrives at Straban with the 10.30 train from Derry to Belfast. Our last glimpse of the Derry Road, appropriately enough, is at the city which gave its name to the line. WT Class 264 Tank number 53 prepares to leave the Great Northern Station at Foyle Road, with the train reported down on the 12th of August 1964. The Foyle Valley Narragage Museum now stands on this site and is well worth a visit. The final part of our programme deals with another line which closed in 1965 and is still fondly remembered. The Great Northern Branch from Gora Wood to Newry and Warren Point. A jeep brings a train off the branch up to Gora Wood Station. A U-Class 440 shunts an xg and vacuum brake van at Gora Wood. A jeep coming up from Newry shows the position of the junction in relation to the Great Northern's Belfast to Dublin main line, which is on the right of the screen. The signalman at Gorawood collects the staff from the driver of the branch train, and the tank engine runs round ready for the return journey. Edward Street was the more important of Newry's two surviving stations. A UG passes through on a goods to Warren Point. The branch passenger set arrives from the junction. A 
jeep hauling a train of CIE stock heads through Newry bound for Warren Point. The train is between Newry's two stations, Edward Street and Dublin Bridge. On Monday the 13th of July 1964, WT Tank number 57 arrives at Newry Edward Street Station with a 1.45 from Belfast to Warren Point. The platform was crowded with passengers off to enjoy an afternoon at the coast. On Easter Monday the 30th of March 1964, SG 060 number 44 was working the branch. The locomotive goes off to be turned. The three classes of big G and R 060s was built for goods traffic but in many a mile on passenger duties throughout their careers. Later in the afternoon, number 44 works the 245 from Warren Point to Gora Wood. The second coach in the set is a GNR clerestory full brake. From the vantage point of the top of Narrowater Castle near Warren Point, John Laird recorded Jeep number 53 powering a Belfast bound train on the 15th of August 1964. We conclude the programme with these scenes of a busy Warren Point, full of engines and coaches, at the height of its last summer season in existence, that of 1964. A year which certainly saw the dimming of the twilight of steam in Ulster. <laughs>